episode of the Ever Black Podcast is brought to you by Death Wish Hot Rods and Customs. Check out their Instagram for all their new t-shirts, caps, beanies, cups, and the all-new Atomic Death lineup. Yeah, it's been. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, dude, it's it's good to really talk to you again, and uh, especially with this new Carnifex album, uh, Graveside Confessions, which is out on September. Sep- 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 it is early in the morning here. Let me back that up. <laughs> <laughs> out on September third, and uh, you've described the concept as uh, all the things you want to say but don't. Uh, the things you carry with you are uh, a little too long, and sometimes right up to the deathbed. Um, was there something that had happened that sparked that or, or influenced that that uh, idea? Um, one particular instance, I don't know that I could think of. I think it was just a compounding effect of looking at the lyrics and the themes that I embraced on the last record, seeing how I wanted to do things differently this time around. Of course, you know, we were in lockdown the entire time we wrote the album. So obviously that was affecting my mindset quite a bit. I think it's safe to say I was in a pretty bad space. I don't even know if I'm out of it yet. Um, but it, it was a tough time uh, to, to go through there. But it was good to have have the record to just be able to dump all that shit into. And that, that was kind of the whole point of the record is like, and kind of the thesis is like, there's probably a lot of uncomfortable, painful things on this album, but ultimately they're truths. And I think for us to move forward, you probably have to face truths about yourself, you know, to, to get to a better place. And so I think that the purge of writing the record, uh, hopefully is that journey towards a better place. You know, I, I've found over the last 12 months, that's been a really big theme that's coming through with people personally. Hey, it's about a lot of people are facing a lot of truths in, you know, and it's, and it can be very difficult. Hey, mm-hmm. you know, but um, yeah, I'm with you there. And it, for us, you know, the band has always been kind of like, you know, even though we're putting a lot of negativity into the music, it's kind of, it's a catharsis, you know, it's, yeah. it's like vomiting out the poison. If, it's, the longer it stays inside you, the worse it gets. And then once you, you get it out, you're like, ah, that feels better. So <laughs> that was that was basically where we're coming from. Let's just put all the our insecurities, all our vulnerabilities, all our regret. Let's just put it here in the record and then move on from it. And try to anyway. Well, in regards to the record, it is heavy as fuck, and I love it. <laughs> and thank you. And that opening title track, it's just. It's so good, man. I think it's one of your best best tracks, to be honest. You know what? Yeah, I, I, I'm inclined to agree with that. Uh, you know, Corey and Sean wrote that one, and that's they're basically the Carnifex sound. You know, like Sean wrote all the early records. He's been a main songwriter ever, you yes. know, from day one. So to have those two guys, and then, of course, we also weren't touring. You know, we're, we're, we're just focused on the record. So I think when you put the two of them in a room, and you say, look, the only thing you got to worry about is writing a record. Uh, you definitely get a pretty badass record out of them. Oh, man, it's so good. It's so good. And uh, you recorded three tracks from your uh, first album, Dead in My Arms, which is 15 next year. Holy shit. <laughs> I mean, I remember having that in the scene. <laughs> man, it's brutal. Um, what inspired you to revisit those ones? Fun. You know, uh, <laughs> we were trying to counterbalance how grim real life was you know (laughs) and uh really we told ourselves like let's embrace fun on this album let's just have a good time and so we not only in the theme of like you know we when we wrote that record we were a four piece when we wrote that back record we had no expectations you know nobody cared no one was listening we were just kids having fun and we wanted to have that feeling again you know we wanted to no, ha- not worry about expectations, not worry about if it sells, if it doesn't, if it's cool, if it gets it turned into a meme or goes viral. Like <laughs> we just really said, you know what, guys, let's just write music we love. Um, people pick up on it. Good for them. And uh, this year is also 10th anniversary of uh, Until I Feel Nothing. Are you planning on doing anything <laughs> to celebrate that? 
Uh, no. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, nothing on the books. Uh, uh-uh. we joke that that's the forgotten record, you know, Aww. because it was a, the last one that we did for Victory, and yeah, uh, it's like our worst selling album. You know, nobody fucking bought it. Uh, it wasn't promoted well. You the whole deal. So, uh, no, nothing planned for that record. I, I kind of forgot about that one, to be honest with you. Well, yeah, I mean, still, I mean, it's still a a chapter in the in the story. But hey, man. It is. Yeah. I I think back to those times and it was actually a really hard time for the band too. So maybe that's why it's easy to forget that. 2010, 2011. Don't even remember. (laughs) It doesn't exist. Yeah. Well, you you tracked the album uh, with your drummer, Sean. Um, Was that his house or jam space or studio? We're here right now. Um, This is where we did the record. Yeah. Right here in the studio. That's mad. Yeah. So basically, I mean, our station's just right there. And, you know, Sean just sat there for a year right, and recorded all of us and did, you know, just messed around with it and, and made a perfect mix, did the mix and the master. So it was pretty in-house, you know, it was really just the four of us and Mick. That was kind of the only people that worked on the album. Talking about Mick, Mick Kenny from uh, Anal. Yeah. Man, that dude. Is, yeah. He's an absolute lord, man. He hasn't worked. He is. He's he's got to be my favorite, like you know, person to work with because he 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 like gets it. No ego, no attitude. I did a bunch of stuff. You tell me what you like. Tell me what you hate. And it's like just that easy. Keep all this shit. Get rid of all that shit. Okay, done. What else do you want? You know, it's just like super easy to work with. No attitude. Just wants to make the record great, which is exactly what you want when you work with somebody. That's it. He's one of my favorite songwriters too. So he is. He's a, he's yeah, really like, prolific. Oh, unreal, unreal. But uh, you also had have your cover of Corn's "Dead Bodies Everywhere" on here as well. Um, did you hear anything from the Corn dudes about that? No, <laughs> <laughs> not a word. Uh-uh. <laughs> they, they fucking should because it's really good. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, that's not really how covers work. I think <laughs> they just they probably think we're some local band, you know local band come on mate come <laughs> on mate <laughs> but uh of course i mean you had a bit of a, a lineup change with jordan leaving uh earlier last year are you still planning on moving forward as, as a four piece yeah i think so you know let's see jordan left the band in november of 2019 so it was prior to covid and, and prior to r- writing a new record or anything so when see we did one tour in 20 and that was uh we went to europe with dire as murder and we had neil time and playing guitar with us from devil driver really fucking awesome guy and we actually asked him you know hey do you want to join uh after we did the tour just because we had such a great time together and he, he was already committed with devil driver and i think well, after that we were just like fuck it we'll just continue as a four piece you know sean had already started writing a bunch of songs and obviously the lockdown had hit um yeah. I mean, you know we, it's not like we were going to be playing any shows so what was the point we just said you know our first record we were a four piece um you know me sean and Corey, like we've basically been in the band since day one you know fred's the newest member he joined in 2007 so at this point we're just we're so dedicated and so invested that um yeah if the four of us can't pull it off what the hell are we doing <laughs> Oh man, I can't wait to see you guys again. Hopefully, uh, sometime soon. It's gonna sound huge. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, into twenty two, beginning of twenty three, maybe somewhere in there. Uh, you know, hopefully, we can find the right promoter, the right band to bring us down, and and we'd love to get love to get there. I know one band. Oh, who's that? Oh, yeah, I just Oh hell yeah! Tell tell Mark you know, to bring us on yeah. down. Yeah, fuck yeah! <laughs> Imagine that. Let's go. Man. Hey, we're we're ready. All they gotta do is ask. We'll be there. That that would be pretty awesome. I'm just putting it out there. You know, <laughs> don't jump up my ass, all you people out there. Just I, I'm just, just dreaming, mate. Just dreaming. But um, of course, I mean, you've also got this competition going on where you're giving away seven string Ibanez. Now I don't know if that includes Australia, but um, that's really fucking cool, man. 
I think it's worldwide. Um, yeah, you know, it's uh, from Ibanez, uh, who, that, you know, they've been our sponsor for us since like 2008, I think, kind of one of our main sponsors. So it's just a chance for us to try to like give something back to the fans, make it exciting, and also, you know, promote the new record. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. hopefully uh, people can, uh, you know, check out the album, enter to win. Maybe you got a guitar coming to you. And I think we threw some merch in there too. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Gonna have to do it. It's pretty damn good. Do it. Yeah, it's a good looking piece. That's all I gotta say. But uh it's also coming out on cassette. I'm fine that's that's becoming something that a lot of collectors are doing now. Are you a collector as well? Do you do you like the old cassettes? Um, I don't know about cassettes, uh, just because I have no way to play them. Uh, but vinyl, yeah, I do have uh some vinyl and you know, cassettes, you know, that's, it's the answer to no one buying CDs. You know what I mean? <laughs> you're just, you're basically trying to come up with, you know, just any physical medium that uh, tape, CD, vinyl, eight track, what the fuck will you buy? Anything, you know? <laughs> uh, I mean, the, you know, the reality is it's like music's digital now. It's just, yep. it's just a fact. So really, yeah. If there's someone out there that wants to pick it up on the different medium, we're all fucking for it, you know. Uh, I think vinyl is probably your best bet because of the size. Yes, you know, you yes, get the, yeah, yeah, you yeah, get yeah, the yeah, album the cover thing, yeah. big. Uh, I think the vinyls themselves look pretty great this this time around. Mm. Um, and then you got all the lyrics, you got all the thank yous. You basically get the the full package and probably the the best looking version of it, you know. So I'd say go with the vinyl if you if yeah. you're a collector. And the tape's sold out anyway. So oh, there you go. <laughs> Two seconds, mate. Darcy. I have a Labradoodle who's a Labradontal. <laughs> She's Labradont, shut the fuck up. Labradoodle, shut up. She wants to be on the show. Mate, she's she's been on the show a few times. It's always in the morning. She'll just go crazy. But um, her and uh, Des's Doberman, Des from mm. Driver's Doberman, were having a conversation. Between That's the, funny. And I was like, they're both like, come on, man. But anyway, sorry, dude. Um, <laughs> now I've lost my track. Good one, dog. Um, <laughs> uh, another thing is that Skeletor hoodie. Look, man, I don't know. I think I think we'd be roughly around the same age. So, I, did you grow up with that stuff as well? I don't know if you can see this. Yeah, movie, but yeah, um, I, I was born in '84, so um, you know, I grew up with all all the the He Man and Thundercat commercial and GI Joe, all that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, we really tried to embrace a lot of that stuff on World War X, like with collectibles and do the VHS throwback, trying to really build a world um, that Skeletor probably would have fit into very nicely. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's always been kind of part of us. You know, we're all we're all born in the 80s. You know, we're all 80s kids. So I, I think that's just going to be a part of us. That's awesome because I'm all about it. I'm in a band um, that is named after that. So I and collect all that stuff. So when I see that stuff and merch for other bands, like I got to have it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, take all my money. Hell yeah, yeah, I love it. I love it. But uh, you're going to be hitting the road with uh, Black Dahlia Murder and After the Burial just in time for the album release. Uh, man, that tour looks like it's going to be incredible. It will be incredible. I I've been dreaming of it for a very long time. That was a, that was a COVID tour that's been <laughs> kicked back like four yeah. or five times now. So for it to finally be happening, I, it's just like, let's go already. <laughs> like it's still <laughs> what two weeks away. It's like, man, that thing is never going to be here. It's like a parole date, you know? <laughs> oh mate, it slows down, but it's going to be so good. Man, I would love to see that down here. Like thy art, you guys, Black Dahlia, man. Hey, uh, man all would, they got to do is ask. We'll be there. <laughs> I'll just, I, I got to buy some lotto tickets and then I'll, yep. and I'll just make <laughs> yeah. it happen, man. I'll make it happen. But I, I would love to see that. That man, anyone that's over there, if you get a chance, get your tickets because, and, and like take pictures and show me because I can't wait. I want to see that shit. It's, it's going to be a hell of a tour. I, I'm stoked for it. Been dreaming man. about it for so long. So good. So good. So, I mean, over the last year, um, we've lost some amazing musicians um, that have been a massive influence on, on many people like uh, Joey Jordison. And it, it is unbelievably sad that, you know, someone like that, that uh, everyone I know has was influenced by him. And, and you, I did like you, you put up a little post saying, you know, 
that you feel like there was no Khan effects if there was not Joey. Can you elaborate on that? That's true. Yeah, it's it's actually really simple. You know, Joey Jordison is is Sean's single biggest musical influence, all the way down to the fact that the reason Sean picked up guitar and started writing music in addition to being a drummer is because of Jordy, uh, Joey, you know. And so I think that our original sound, you know, doing those those first couple songs that we did back in 05 and 06, that was, you know, Sean's drumming style is, so, I mean, listen to the fills on My Heart and Atrophy and Slit Wrist, like the, they're Joey's fills, you know, and yeah, he'll yeah. be the first person to tell you that. And so if there was no Joey, there would have, you know, Sean wouldn't be who he was, which means Carnifex wouldn't exist. So it's, it's a straight line, in my opinion. As far as the loss, yeah, it's, it fucking sucks that it's, it had to be like that. And it's, it sucks that it was so, it just highlighted how lonely a musician's life is. You know, it's like you do, you, you do what you can, you're fighting for the dream. I know he wasn't happy with not being in Slipknot anymore. And I'm sure he was feeling very unresolved. And, yes. you know, like, you try, how do you get back to that? I'm sure he, he like racked his brain trying to figure out how to get back to that, that level or to that period of time where he was able to express himself as fully as he was. And uh, it just speaks to the peaks and valleys of being an artist. And, you know, wherever he is, I hope he's good. Yeah, me too, man. Like, what an unbelievable dude. Like, music Truly. changed right at that that first album. I remember that moment I heard it, being in the, walking into this record store and seeing the poster and being like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> right? you know, listening to yeah. it on the headphones, the big headphones. I, I don't know that, that Deathcore would be what it is without Joey, to be honest with you. Like, because I think yeah. all these Deathcore drummers were, were Joey Jordison kids. <laughs> totally. You know? Totally. Um, it, it's just kind of a matter of fact. I just so yeah. I mean, he 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 left an indelible mark on the industry. I I really wish he was still here. Man, me too, me too. But it, it's I mean, talking about your influence. I mean, I know a bunch of dudes who who love Carn Effects down here, especially back in the yeah. day. I used to work in a CD shop. Man, I remember <laughs> stuff on the shelves and and like just dudes frothing it. You know, like. Yeah, it's kind of a trip. Uh, I mean, we were really just in it for so long that it, we never really had a, the time to sort of step outside of it and and uh, I guess appreciate kind of what we had done at yeah. large, so to speak. Even right now, it's really hard to, to understand, you know, because it we're in like in a, such a challenging place as a band right now. And like, you know, uh, I feel like we just got knocked down to size, you know, it's like, we're just like a local starting all over again. Um, so it, it, I feel very detached from that sentiment, but I hope we can get back there. Oh, you will, man, for sure. Once to start touring again, man. That's what we need. You know, it's just like, dude, being off the road for, I don't even know how long it's been now, 18, 19 months, whatever it is. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's uh not how you can't be a band like that yeah frankly at least i i can't be in a band like that you know live performances are really the heart and soul of of not only of our music scene but of our band of our artistic expression mm -hmm. of everything but you, you played a couple of shows recently didn't you yeah we, we thankfully we were able yeah. to we did 12 dates uh in the midwest uh and they were fucking phenomenal like uh selling out venues we've never sold out before in small you know small towns where we we don't normally go um and then of course the the merch is just out of control so it was a taste it was a taste but uh <laughs> just dreaming about getting back to it oh man big games couple of weeks mate happening it is right <laughs> the yeah. big game yeah, yeah. the yeah. big game's coming up i'm looking forward to it Hey, and I'm so stoked for you. But, uh, of course, tour is coming up. Album's coming out. What else uh, is on the cards, man? What, what do you got cooking up for into 2022? Well, we got a couple more tours. You know, we're doing a co-headline with Chelsea Grin in Europe, January, February. We come back here, May, June. We're doing a big headline tour, uh, co-headline tour, I should say, that we'll be announcing. I think we announced it in December. Okay. Um, 
And then, uh, I don't know, you know, we're probably gonna start working on another record. I know we want to do another record really quick. Um, and hopefully get down to Australia, you know, into 22, beginning of 23, somewhere in there. If we can get, you know, we just got to get someone to bring us down really. Summer. Beers. Yeah. Barbecues. Party. Hey, Let's do it, man. Sign us up. Yeah. <laughs> Well, man, it's been awesome hanging out with you again. Uh, of course, the new Carnifex album, Graveside Confessions, comes out on September 3rd. We'll have all the links down here. Brother, you take care. Have a blast on tour. I wish this was a beer. I'd be toasting you. But have a blast on that fucking tour, man. Send all my love to all the boys and um, stay safe, all right? I will, man. Thank you for having me on the show. I appreciate it. Take care, dude. See you later. All right, brother. Later on. <laughs>